Asians and Latinos are the two fastest growing ethnic groups in America. So that begs the question, are Lasians the future? Yeah, the LA Times just dropped a viral article basically saying that the Asian-Latino, Latino-Asian pairing and their interracially mixed children, Andrew, are the future of California's demographics. Yeah, California is 15% Asian and 40% Latino. So this is going to be happening more and more. In the past 10 years, the Asian-Latino mixture doubled in California. And I'll tell you this, it's not surprising that it doubled, Andrew, when you look at the uh, the couple that they featured, Andrew, this was a Chinese-Mexican mix, Andrew. They have six children. My goodness. Please, guys, Asia, if you have declining birth rates, I think you need to let Latinos immigrate over there. But uh, no, in all seriousness, guys, we're going to talk about this, and then uh, we're also going to bring in our Korean-Mexican friend at the end to go give his perspective. But please hit that like button and check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys because from frivolous to serious, you know, we're talking about it all. I mean, there was a lot of speculation in the comment section about what should you call somebody who is half Asian and half mm. Latino. Should you call him a Hispasian? Should you call him a Malaysian? Obviously, a uh, uh, Mexican is somebody who's half Mexican and half Korean. Hapitos, Hapitas, Hapanese, Hapanex, if you want to be politically correct. Somebody said, uh, yeah, I just call them Filipinos. <laughs> I heard that in more uh, Spanish-speaking countries, sometimes they get called El Chinito. Love. Right, because actually in the Spanish world, they actually already have a word for somebody that is Asian or half Asian being raised over there. Mm -hmm. Because obviously... I think the Latin world is a lot more diverse than people give it credit for. Um, the first comment, Andrew, was, you know, I'm Korean on my dad's side, Mexican on my mom's side, double the rice. And other people said, yeah, I got so many different types of rice. We got yellow rice, sofrito rice, brown rice, purple rice, white rice. Hey, lots of rice between the Asians and the Latinos. Somebody also said, you know, growing up in Latin countries, it's different because we do have immigrants from Asia for the last like 100 years growing up in Mexico or growing up in Peru, a bunch of Japanese and Brazil. So the way we've mixed over time, we could be part European, indigenous, Latin. We could be Asian. We could be black all in one race. And we're not going to like think too much about it because everybody's been so mixed over time. Exactly. I mean, people forget that Peru had a Japanese president, although controversial, you, he got elected. Yeah. Somebody said, uh, I feel torn between both of my sides. I don't know whether I'm more Hispanic or I'm more Asian. And other people just said, dude, I don't even care. I'm just me. Regardless if people try to issue me ultimatums to pick a side that I identify with more, I'm just me. Somebody said, you know, it's interesting because I'm mixed, but I visually look like one side or the other. So I'm half Asian, but everybody sees me as Latino. Or I'm half Latino, mm -hmm. but everybody sees me as Asian, depending on how I just present visually. And, and, the, and the funny thing is about this, it even depends on who's scanning your face because certain Asians will think, you, oh, you're more Asian or you're less Asian and then Hispanic people might see it a different way and, and then everybody else sees it a different way. You know what I think is interesting about this mix though of Asian Latino? So you're Asian Latino and you're mixed you have a mixed identity in America, but you're not one of the dominant groups. You're not white or black. Right. Because oftentimes, the most mixed is white and black, right? right. And you're then, saying technically, even though you're mixed between Asian and Latin, you're both outside of the Anglosphere or what is considered yeah. the uh, white-black binary of America. Yeah, you're just still the two, like, min like the super minority groups in America. But and, of course, the last comment was just like, uh, you know, I'm half Asian, I'm half Latin. I'm pretty much a DIY Filipino. <laughs> The uh, uh, comments are funny, but yeah, let us know in the comments down below if there's any mixed people out there, if you feel more one of these comments more than the other. But I really want to talk about, David, why do we think it's happening more? Because, of course, the article is going to keep it real PC. They didn't want to talk about how, you know, these other reasons. But why, why do we think that this Latin and Asian couple is happening more? Well, I think that there's a lot of similarity, number one, in culture and similarity in story. Like, both groups actually in huge amounts, by the way, I'm not saying there wasn't Asians here 100 years ago, there wasn't Latin people here 200 years ago on what is now American tour territory or maybe hundreds and hundreds of years ago. I'm just saying in terms of like huge numbers, probably came post 1960. Yeah, yeah. And uh, all right, this is just a joke, everybody. <laughs> but we both have fobs fresh, over, fresh off the boat and fresh over the border. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I mean- a joke. I mean, it's one funny. is just over water yeah, and one we is all, over a border. We all eat rice. We all have our chicken and rice dishes too. Um, I think they're both like really just trying to make it in America. I think a lot of Asian people and a lot of Latino people, whether it's your, your parents' experience or actually them going through it in the moment, you kind of know what it's like to arrive to a new place. You don't really speak the language. You don't fully fit in and you're just trying to survive. Mm -hmm. and, and I guess like living this cool TV lifestyle of the rich and famous like Hollywood access life is not your top priority. Right, You're right. just trying to set up something stable for your family to, to take the levels up, up and up. Oh, possibly you both grew up watching 
content from the motherland. You know how like a lot of uh, Latinos in America, they still watch like Univision or something like that. You're watching like Spanish shows while a lot of Asians grew up watching Asian shows as well. Yeah, I don't think you feel entitled to anything in the media because mm -hmm. obviously American media and it's not bad or anything like that is mostly just white or black. So probably if you're Latino, if you wanted to see Latino representation, you had to turn on Univision or a number of Spanish speaking channels, right? And obviously if you're Asian, you had to look back to whether that was you, you lean into the anime or the K-dramas or the mm -hmm. K-pop or whatever in language content that you had yeah. access to. I mean, even food can be kind of similar. Like I personally think that Mexican and Korean food is very similar, right? Lots of grilled meats, a lot of pickled vegetables, kind of meats and veggies. Um, so obviously that's why you get like great Kalbi tacos right you know from the kogi uh taco truck. beauty of ramen yeah beauty of ramen it works out um also i really think that both immigrant groups really focus on hard work and i think maybe that's just immigrant groups in general but obviously we all know the stereotype latinos or mexicans they're like very hard working asians work very hard asians they i think typically they more value like formal education they're like study 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 in the books in the books and then latinos are like hey like you know even if you don't like get a's like you could still live a good life and work hard yeah i mean i saw this in a comment and i don't have the official statistic but they said that they believed the mixture between like the man being asian and the woman being latina or the man being latino and the woman being asian was much more even it was like kind of yeah. close to a 50 50 yeah and this brings us to the next point let's be real be being Asian guys, you know, and having dated in the world, Latin women are open to Asian guys. Yeah. Yeah, they really are, to and, be honest. And do you think that's because possibly, obviously, the indigenous people who were in Latin America originally had come from Asia? I mean, personally, some of the uh, Latina women that I've gone out with, they've even told me that at times they've been mistaken for part Asian. Or even one a girl that I went out with, uh, she even got mistaken for Indian. Oh, right, because, right, right. Because she was more of like the indigenous Mexican right, side. She was you from know? Oaxaca, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's kind of like they can kind of look like different races. And I feel like that often, when you get mistaken for different races or you get mistaken for that racial group, you are more likely to date that racial group. Right. No, that is logical. Because if your whole life you got told that you look like this thing, you're not, you're going to be open to it yeah. more than likely. I mean, to be honest, and I also think. Uh, Latin people, they come from countries where we said they have all different looks. Like in Brazil, people are black, they look white, they also can maybe look Asian and they look indigenous, right? So these people, like maybe they don't harbor as many kind of like racial biases and kind of like the superiority complex as much. So when they meet like another Asian, another minority, they're like more open to it. So to be honest, yes, I do know a lot of more like Latin women who date Asian guys. Like that's very common. Well, you know, I think there's a lot of similarities. Obviously, there's differences as well. Bring in Fred. Of course, joining us today, Freddie Lee. Fred, how do you feel about representing the future demographics of the state of California? I don't know. It's like a lot of power. I, I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, yeah, now you're going to have to run the state, Fred. You are now responsible what? because you are Korean and Mexican. Bulgogi tacos or birria ramen? Bulgogi tacos. Yeah, that was, sure. that, that was a, that was a overall. It was a, I think the birria ramen looks better on Instagram. But the bulgogi tacos was more of the, it works better. Do you have an inkling to go to California? Because after you well, learned this. Yeah, well, I mean, it's good to see that they're like, the population's rising and stuff. And um, I might just even go there just to start my acting career so I can represent my my people, you know? Oh, oh yeah, that's true. Hey, what, what are some of the weird things about being Mexican and Korean in particular? And you grew up around a lot of Koreans. So you, you grew, kind of grew up in more towards the Korean part of Jersey but you're half Mexican. So I guess like, what, what is that like? Like, what are some funny things? Well, honestly, I did live in a, pop, a Korean populated area, but there was also Hispanic. So I think I got both of my um, cultures in, especially in school. And there's like the Korean side and there was also like the Hispanic side. Um, so you're saying that those were the two predominant groups in your high school? Yeah. Were Asian and Latino. Were you able to sort of like go between the worlds? Yeah, I was basically the bridge. The bridge between like all cultures. Just because, like, I'm a theater kid. You know, I go around. I talk to people. Um, I mean, it was fine. It, it was okay. Um, was there any tension between the groups at all that you, being the in-between mixed breed, could actually smooth out? The one thing I know for sure is that they didn't really like each other. The Koreans didn't really like the Hispanics. The Hispanics didn't really like the Koreans because they were... Uh, there was, like, not But it wasn't blunt. intense, right? Yeah, yeah, it wasn't blunt. It, they, they didn't go out and be like, I hate you, you know? They were just, like... 
subtle lot. We don't, we don't so talk to How do you feel? Because you're the mix and you're like, you're friends with everybody, but I feel like most of your friends are Asian, but it's like, you're kind of in between. So it's like, hey guys, like, why, why can't they just be cool? Listen, I think it's the way I see it. It's like the Korean side or like the Asian side. They were more proper. Like they, they were, they'd like to do things like the right way, but like the Hispanic side, they were more of like doing their own thing. Right, not proper. having to follow the conventional path, right? Yeah. Of just like yeah. always just try to become a, <clears throat> STEM subject or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. So, so what do you identify as? Do you identify clearly as Korean Mexican, or do you feel like a little bit more Asian, or you're you you spend more time with your mom? So it's like, are you more Mexican now? Like, what do you think? Uh, I would say for people who do ask me, I I'm more Mexican just because I lived with my mom, which is the Mexican side. Um, but I do have a lot of like Asian traits. Like I like to like when I want something, I try to focus up and like get that. Mm. Like I run for it you know i wouldn't wait all right down. guys everybody in the comments down below please comment what you think fred looks more like does he look more east asian okay being korean does he look more mexican typically mexican or does he look more filipino yeah did you get <laughs> filipino a lot do i get a lot of filipino comments from like strangers like are you filipino like uh, budget budget version yeah <laughs> What do you think about the future of America or f the future of the world? Do you think it is going to be like this mixed look that almost to me reminds me of like Brazilian or Puerto Rican where it's like it's part white, it's part black, it's part Asian, it's part Latino all in one thing? To be honest, I thought it would be like a lot sooner. Like I thought this type of indigenous people would like come up a lot sooner than now. But like I think that's going to like a lot of these people are going to be coming up a lot like in the future, like far future. hundred years, like everyone's going to be mixed up everything. Like we don't know what, what what's what. No, for sure. I think that anybody who's like Asian, anybody who's Latin, whether it's the man or the woman, regardless, if they get together, they're probably more uh, open minded or more progressive member of their group. Right. Like, yeah. I mean, I think that when you have two open minded people that are different, they're more likely to be together than the most like traditional thinking versions of the group right like if there's somebody if there's an asian guy who only wants to be around other asians and there's a latina girl who only wants to be around other latinas unlikely that they get together but if they're somehow mixing at work or school or they get to know each other or they're part of the same friend group or something obviously that that's going to help all right last but not least fred what is a dish you could think of that hasn't been popularized yet that could be a good collabo I know you guys said this before, mole jjigae. I think that could be really good because mole is really kind of it's a spicy dish. You know, it's not spicy, but it's enough to be like a like a jjigae. You know? So so yeah, so you, that's so, true. It's like a hot stew that's like bubbling. Exactly. Right? So we're talking about a mole stew with like noodles, with the instant noodles, with spam, and like does it have coach? <laughs> look at look at Fred's Gen Z that, face. That, He's that, biting that. his lip. Oh my gosh, <laughs> you are Latin, bro. I would say. Uh, <laughs> I would say for sure, I mean, there is some differences in culture, maybe some with the uh, touchiness or openness towards like uh, dating and stuff yeah. like that. But I will say this. I think one thing that I uh, that actually popped up in our hometown, Andrew, was Sinaloa sushi. Mm. I know that the Mexican sushi popped up and that's been pretty cool to yeah. see. And uh, You know what? Overall, guys, uh, we're just going to wrap it up here. I think the Latin and Asian mix is really interesting. And I think it's cool because there's this balance. Like Latin culture is known to be very, very warm and extra loving lots of pda okay we know latin couples like everybody's seen that loving mexican couple somewhere and they just they just mm, they talk about the public makeup right? more like they just love each other right but then that's so different than a lot of other asian couples so i think it's a good balance where it's like you take the warmth of the latin side and then you kind of take the i guess the cold like <laughs> i just gotta work hard and study side of the asians and then you mix it together. I don't know. So anyways, guys, you let us know in the comments down below. Are you mixed? Have you seen this mix? Um, have you dated a Latino? Have you dated an Asian? Or what do you think is the next mixture, guys? You let us know in the comments down below. Hopefully this video was helpful and fun. And until next time, we out. Peace.